Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 826. I had the white piece and started off with D4. Um, I wanted to use this game as a, a vehicle for explaining the system I use against these uh, King's Indian uh, defenses. So I start off playing all the main moves, so D4 and C4, G6, and Knight to C3. And I, I play the main line up to this point. Uh, if, uh, if you want to go for the Fianchetto vari variation, you can actually play g3 right here, and that will get you to a similar kind of position. But I actually like, um, like to play um, against the Grinfeld. So I play knight c3 here, and this allows black to, uh, to play the Grinfeld. Uh, he can play d5 right here. You can see it's a second choice, and then I can go for a mainline Grinfeld. Um, but if, uh, if black is a king's Indian player, he will play uh, bishop to g7. And this is where uh, my system starts. <laughs> and uh, I got the idea for this from uh, when I did a series of videos on the uh, Zurich tournament of 1950, 1952, 1953. Uh, I forget when that was. And um, you can find that on the channel. And they were playing a lot of this uh, Fianchetto system against the king's Indian. And, um, and so I've kind of stuck with it because I was looking for a way to play against the King's Indian where I didn't get killed so much. Uh, to show you uh, the standard lines in the King's Indian, the, the classical variation goes like this. You go e4, d6, knight f3, castles, bishop e2. That's the classical variation at that point, I guess. e5, um, and then I can castle knight to c6. So this is the Mar del Plata variation, which is the most most popular, uh, knight to e7. And then right here, white has choices between uh, b4, the bayonet variation, or the two knight moves, knight to e1 or knight to d2, uh, to prepare to meet uh, black is going to expand on the king side here, and white eventually is going to uh, expand on the queen side. It leads to very sharp double-edged play, and uh, I just haven't done well in those positions. <laughs> so uh, so I've been looking for uh, ways to uh, avoid them as white. And so let's go back to the game. Uh, the system I came up with is to play the Fianchetto variation starting right here. Knight f3 is another interesting way to avoid the uh, kind of main lines, but uh, I have a different plan for the knight. So go g3 here, black castles, uh, bishop g2, and you can see uh, this is, we've, after bishop g2, I think we're back into one of the main lines of the Fianchetto variation. And then if, uh, if black continued with the main line, I just want to show you the idea of how I would play this. Uh, black goes d6. I don't go knight f3 here. I avoid knight f3 and I play e3. He goes, say, knight bd7, also e5, and I put the knight on e2. And this is the kind of setup that I'm going after, and the King's Indian players will typically play e5 here, and uh, I can castle. And, um, well, I, I can put on a couple more moves, rook e8 and b3, and you can see kind of the whole setup. And then this bishop can go to b2, and it acts as a counter to this bishop here. Um, this pawn structure on this side is pretty solid, so when black begins his pawn storm, uh, counterattack on the king side, as the king's Indian players often want to do. Uh, you have you have pretty good uh, uh, position for you're in a pretty good position for holding it off. And in, and this knight on uh, e2, in addition to protecting this knight over here, in addition to protecting the knight on c3, the knight on e2 is also helping to control the uh, f4 square, and so that will also slow down this f5. F4 push. So those are uh, the ideas that I have for playing. And uh, the knight on e2 is out of the way of the bishop, so uh, so white has more control than usual over this diagonal. Maybe it'll hinder uh, the development of the light squared bishop. Uh, and notice there's no pawn on h3, so there's no possibility of a bishop takes h3 sacrifice, which is so uh, common in these King's Indian situation. So, uh, you know, I can recommend this to you if you want to try it out as a different way to play against the King's Indian. Now, uh, I should mention the big drawback here is that um, basically this position is an equal position. If you put it on a chess engine, it'll say yeah, black is doing fine. And I think that's true. It probably is an equal position. Whereas the other lines, the sharper lines, are supposedly good for uh, white. But uh, in practice, uh, black has pretty good chances as well, especially in blitz. And uh, in this position, 
uh, white is very solid and is playing for a long game and like I said has pressure and ideas so uh, I, I really think it's quite playable. Um, so anyway let's go back to the game. After I played my bishop g2 move he didn't go d6 he went uh, c6. Bit of a rare decision. I go with e3 anyway and then he went queen c7. d6 would still be uh, kind of normal but after this we're just out of the book after queen c7 and the chess engine at this point starts to give uh, white an advantage so I guess there's something something a little bit odd about that queen placement you know it's not uh, it's not really looking at any big targets over here on the king side so I think this is uh, you know if you're uh, that, that's kind of the advantage of playing a system which is a little bit offbeat is if, if your opponent is just going for his usual moves in a blitz game he may find himself with the, all his pieces on the wrong squares all of a sudden uh, okay so I continue with my setup knight e2 e5 and then e5 when it's not supported by a pawn I really think you should just take it in this system because we get this situation I mean the whole idea here is to have a, a strong position on the king side now I've got a situation where I've got four pawns against three so that's kind of the ideal case of what I'm looking for in this setup. Um, let's see, so I just castle here, I exchange, I castle. Normally, yeah, normally you don't get to do that by the way. I, I, that is uh, something specific to the way black played here. Normally uh, black will be supporting this e, e5 push with a move like d6 and so the trade here will still leave four pawns against four. So, uh, but if you do get the opportunity to get four on three on the king side, I think that's uh, there's a good chance. <laughs> it's good for white to do that. Okay, so take there. Uh, let's see, I castled and he went d6. So now I've got uh, a weakness I can play against here and I'm still planning to get in b3 and bishop b2 uh, to complete my setup. Uh, let's see, I went to queen d2. I wanted to kind of defend the knight so that there isn't, uh, weren't surprises along this diagonal. Um, oh, another idea here, and I have played this way as well, instead of going for this um, e3, b3, bishop b2 right away, you can actually go for e4 and get a position that resembles a um, a uh, Botvinnik setup in the English uh, and that's quite playable as well. And in fact the e4 is one of the top choices of the chess engine here but this queen d2 is also good. I just wanted to mention that's another way to play this system um, and I have played that way myself sometimes. So and this point he just blunders a piece so that's pretty much game over at this point. The, the main reason I wanted to show this game is I just wanted to, to share this system with you. But uh, knight e4 is the exactly the kind of blunder that happens uh, when you play a different setup. So in this setup I've got the bishop and the knight working to control these squares on the light squared diagonal. In a normal setup uh, this knight would be on f3 and with the knight on f3 uh, black is perfectly safe in playing this knight e4 move. So it's kind of a typical move uh, that the King's Indian player might want to play if he hadn't bothered to uh, <laughs> check the uh, tactical possibilities here. Uh, but of course it just loses a piece in this position. But that's that's how these mistakes can happen is you've got a slightly different setup than what your opponent is expecting. Okay so he goes d5. I think I'll just go through the rest of the moves quickly because I just stay a piece up the rest of the game and um, you know he tries to stir up some trouble but nothing much happens. I mean it's it's still a long game because it takes me a while to break through um, and uh, there was there was one or two other points that are interesting so let's just go to the interesting points uh, right here after this rick to d2. You know I had this pin operating and um, I was kind of uh, reluctant to give it up but I couldn't figure out any other way to get all my pieces into the game but to move my queen. Uh, but the chess engine had an idea here which I thought was kind of nice. Wants to go knight c5 taking advantage of the fact that um, well the queen has got to defend the rook so it can't really take that knight. And um, that does sack the pawn but I'm gonna lose that pawn anyway it looks like. He's got his forces coordinated in it and I'm just not in a good position to defend it. So the idea is to keep the b-pawn, push it on to b4, gain a tempo on the queen and then bring my queen out to c3 and then now my rook is ready to join the game and his pieces have been pushed back again and I can trade off this bishop at some time perhaps if that looks like a, a good thing to do but uh, right now there's there's going to be a threat of um, 
Mm, well, it's not so easy. If I could get a rook to the back rank, my queen is on this diagonal, and that would be a, a nice mating pattern to set up, but his queen is guarding that square. So I was going to say maybe there's a threat of rook coming out, but not yet. But still, I can activate my rook uh, maybe on e1 too, also threatening just to uh, mess up his pawns over here. Anyway, uh, that's just a way to get my pieces active. I played queen c1. This also is going to uh, give up the b-pawn. Let's see, he took with, uh, oh, he played b5, kicking my knight first. So I ended up going to c5 anyway, supported by the queen. Uh, and also it's not under attack from his queen in any case because the pawn's in the way. And then he grabbed the uh, a pawn. So I grabbed the bishop here in order to create uh, this awkward pawn structure for black. And then I threw in this uh, check. Um, and uh, if he tries to hold on to the pawn like this with king f7, um, I can harass the king a bit. This is a chess engine line as well. And then uh, bring my rook to c1. So I've kind of kicked his king around and now the, the rook is maybe threatening to enter on some square on the c file. The queen at, at the moment is guarding c7. But uh, anyway, that, that's another way to get my pieces active if he's trying to hold on to the pawn. He just gave up the pawn immediately with king g7. So I went ahead and took it. Uh, let's see, he went queen d2. He's trying to get some counterplay down here, keep my rook tied up. I went bishop to d5 to set up uh, some uh, checkmating ideas over here. He went uh, a5. Um, so I gave the check. The king went to h6. If it goes to h8, of course, it gets mated. So that is forced. And, um, and then right here, I didn't play the best move. I, I went for the queen trade, which uh, gets to an end game, which I found find easier to win in these uh, blitz games. But there is uh, a better sequence here. So if you want to... Uh, Think about it, why don't you pause the video and see if you can find the best continuation for white. Okay, uh, yeah, pause the video if you want to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. It is worth uh, searching for. It's kind of a nice, nice uh, uh, sequence. But here I go. Uh, it starts with the move queen f8 check. And the uh, first thing is that uh, if the king, the king only has two moves. Um, can't come back and nothing can block the check so I can go to uh, h4 or g4 so we'll do h4 first uh, what you can do is you can check with this bishop on uh, f3 and the king has no moves uh, on the h file anymore these squares are covered uh, that's covered so he has to go to uh, g5 and then uh, pawn to h4 is mate so a pretty nice mating pattern with the queen guarding these escape squares and the bishop guarding these escape squares and then the pawn delivering the mate. Um, but that's not the only idea here. The other way of playing it is the king goes to uh, g5 first. This is probably the better choice, or, or he lasts longer here. And in this line, you throw the h-pawn forward first. So the queen is still um, guarding all of these escape squares. If the king goes back to... Uh, to h5, then bishop f3 is made again. So the king comes forward to live the longest. And now the queen <laughs> comes in, supported by the bishop, to deliver the check. And uh, he can't run back. All those squares are covered by the queen, the pawn, and the queen. So his only move is to go to uh, h3. And then the finishing blow, <laughs> do you see it? It is bishop here is mate. So there is actually a forced mate in that position. This is a pretty nice one too. Uh, the mate delivered by the bishop in this case, but the king helping to uh, uh, prevent black's king from escaping and he's caught. He's caught surrounded by uh, white's pieces here and black's pieces are helpless over on that side. Anyway, that would have been the nicest way to finish the game. Uh, but uh, easiest when I'm playing blitz is just to get the queens off, uh, which is forced and then just play this end game. And uh, there's not too much going on in this end game. I just have to be careful that I don't um, lose all the pawns because uh, rook, rook and bishop versus rook is a draw. So if all the pawns were to disappear, uh, black could get a draw, but I have lots of pawns. Um, and so it's not going to be a problem. So fairly, fairly straightforward win. Um, you know, I wasted some moves here, like here when he, um, attacked by bishop, I could have gone directly to this square. Instead, I went I went back here 
and then then I came out here because um, I need to figure out how to uh, pile up on this pawn get the last pawn off the board and then I push my pawns forward and of course if that comes forward at any time I'm just gonna take it um, so after this he resigned because at this point well he has to move his rook out of the way and then I can take here with check he has no way to defend that and then I can push my pawns down if I don't yeah I don't I might uh, I might be pretty close to mating him there I guess he has to run here and then maybe I can pick up his rook and mate him without even queening a pawn but in any case uh, he resigned so it was a, a there was that interesting part that I wanted to show you in the beginning what my ideas were and there was some cute tactics there uh, at the end so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you later